Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out Among the Sleep, a first person horror adventure where you play as a two year old child. This is the public alpha of this game and it's by developer Krillbyte Studio. You might remember they did the game The Plan, the one where you play as a fly and you slowly work your way up into the sky. Uh, it was a pretty cool game. It was very experimental. This is, I believe, their more full-fledged project. Uh, henceforth, it has a Kickstarter, which actually was funded. Uh, they had a goal of $200,000. They hit 248 k which is pretty huge. So this one is definitely going forward in production. Uh, it also does have a Greenlight campaign, which uh, if you want to, you're going to want to check out uh, in the description after you watch. Uh, we're going to figure out if that is something that we want to do. Go support them, give them a vote and such. Uh, we're going to do that right now by checking into the game. First though, let's look into our options, see if there's anything worth noting here. Uh, we've got our screen resolution and all set up. Uh, oddly enough, the resolution does not at all match what I am looking at on my screen right now. It says 1920 by 1080 I'm actually playing in 720, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Uh, there are controls and general. It says active analytics. I don't know what that actually means. Uh, regardless, let's start it up. We've got our loading screen. Gives you our basic controls here. Nothing too complicated. Uh, control, click to crawl, or control to crawl and slash stand, space to climb. Click and drag to interact and open doors. A very interesting premise, the fact that we'll be playing as a two-year-old in a first-person horror game. I'm very curious to see how this is going to go, so let's start it up. It's time for bed now. So good night, precious. I will sing you a song my mother sang to me when I was young. Wow, that was a pretty dramatic introduction. I uh, really wasn't expecting it to be so cinematic, actually. So here we are in Among the Sleep. This is the, well, the first time I've actually experienced this, and I have to say it didn't play very well with fraps. Uh, I had to do about three restarts between crashes and other issues. Uh, granted, though, it is an alpha, so I'm not that upset. It's just something that I figured was worth mentioning. I think this is a Unity game? So I found that a little surprising, but it kept having, like, resolution problems uh, every time I tried to do anything. Anyway, so here we are in the game. This is really interesting, actually. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going on uh, worth noting. Uh, so we've we've actually got a view of our body for once, which is a pretty rare feat. And we are able to just barely walk around. Uh, we have the ability to climb over edges. We can crouch. We can crawl actually seem to be much more stable and fast crawling about. And uh, everything seems quite sinister here, even though it probably shouldn't be. Not sure why the cr uh, cradle got knocked over there. That was uh, definitely something you don't want to have happen. Can I press this button? No, maybe not. Oh, maybe they'll add that in later. Maybe I can drop a block on it. I just want to make the train set go. No. Oh, uh, looks like it just clips right through it. Oh well. Can't fault me for trying, right? So we're going to explore this environment a little bit, see what there is to see. Uh, looks like we can interact with just about all the objects here. Or at least all the individual objects. These books seem to be piled together. It's a pretty nice little frog car he's got. Let me open this. Oh, it's got a little bit of that, like, amnesia 
or a penumbra thing where you can actually pull out the individual draws or drawers. Uh, but I can't. Oh, I can actually see over them. Ah, I can even climb up there. Um, what are we looking at? I don't know, various random little kid things. Uh, what's in this drawer? Hand-drawn clothing. Pretty nice art style, actually. Everything's got this, like, warm feeling to it, which is a little strange. Now, do I get hurt if I fall off of high places? No. Kid takes the fall pretty well. Can I move this elephant around? I can. Uh, oh, well. Now, what's going on over here? This area seems to be penned off with the railings that they use for, like, really fancy concert events. When they want to separate people from each other. What's going on in the back corners of this scary room? Oh, can I knock this set of pins over? Oh, yes I can. Alright, well, I didn't expect to get a strike, but you know. Pretty nice that there are physics to that degree. Let's go look outside of this room. How about that? See if we can do a little bit of sprinting. Run! It's pretty fleet-footed. Great sense of scale and perspective. Everything really does feel looming overhead. Hard to believe we all started looking up at the world like this, right? Yep, too high to reach that. I'm guessing we're going to have to do some physics puzzles to get out of here. Nothing we can't figure out in just a matter of moments. I like that they stay very consistent with the viewpoint and the perspective, too, that the camera actually shakes around uh, as you're climbing up things. There's a good sense of uh, body and mass going on here, and the fact that everything's got this blue tinge to it as well uh, definitely gives it this... I don't know, it's, it's a surreal kind of a feeling, but it's actually something that we all are familiar with. I don't know exactly what the right word is for it. Washing machine laughing at me. Now the question is, are all the things that we see in this world, are they exaggerated because we're a little kid, and this is how the kid perceives them, or are they actually going to be surreal, like uh, paranormal type things? That's what I'm curious about. I don't know if this is based in reality or not yet. But, you know, we did just see our cradle lift up for no apparent reason and the teddy bear get dragged out of the cradle, so... Oh, look at that great shadow. I don't know what's going on in there. I think there's somebody trapped in the washing machine yelling they need to get out. <laughs> now, did they baby-proof the light sockets? Well, I can put my face right in it. I don't know how helpful that's going to be, though. So if you wanted to be truly sinister, set this kid up with some Legos. And then you could have some Home Alone-style hijinks, just putting Legos everywhere. You know, it's like the number three cause of death in, uh, you know, family homes. People stepping on Legos, they impale on their foot, foot gets infected, just have to die. It's the only option at that point. No, I'm, I'm actually completely making that statistic up, that's not true at all. Uh, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to be going. There does appear to be a door right there, maybe I can mess with. Uh, there are stairs, but the stairs appear to be blocked off. I'm not sure if there's a handle anywhere for me to touch. Yeah, it's, it's locked down. Can go through the vent? No, it doesn't appear so. Uh, should I use something to climb up on one of these surfaces? This is a really good idea for a game, honestly. I mean, the fact that this hasn't been done by now is really kind of astounding. Uh, just sending a whole new sense of perspective through all these environments that we're so pretty much familiar with, and I think we can pretty much all relate to in some element. I can't turn this off. I can't open it up. Oh, I guess I can unplug it. There we go. Oh, it's the teddy bear in there. Well, now it all makes sense. Alright, so I'm going to carry the teddy bear over my shoulder, apparently, where he then disappears completely. 
Oh, is he? Oh, he's actually riding on my back. Okay, I get it. Oh, now the gate opens. Now, navigating stairs as a very small child is not always the easiest thing. This is actually pretty daunting. Although they are very long, so if I fell, I would probably not fall particularly hard. Oh, okay. Well, I was expecting this to be a challenge, but it looks like he's just gonna walk right down him. There's always that thing with first-person games where I never quite understand why they do this, but there's like this uh, invisible slant over the top of all the stairs, so you just basically walk up an incline. I'd much prefer having to traverse each individual step, uh, rather than just sort of skimming over the top of all of them, where we basically float upward. I'm trying to show you, if I can, what the feet are doing here, because they're not actually traversing steps, they're just going up little by little, so the uh, precipice of each step basically is averaging where your feet might be if you were walking up an incline. Uh, which is accomplished simply by putting the incline very close to the steps, or even under them sometimes, which is, I believe, the case there. You know, at worst, what happens is you end up walking, floating way over the stairs, and I think that's always way less than ideal. Uh, I'm not sure what you are. Uh, apparently not my buddy. What is this? The vacuum? Pretty strange-looking vacuum, if that's what it is. Alright, somebody made a real mess of this house. Well, thankfully we can crawl. What is this? Oh, it's a pipe. That was like a really rotten banana or something. Alright, what's going on in here? Anything? Not much. Whoa! Looks like we're about to recreate a scene from Poltergeist here or something. And again, I hope I put the brightness up high enough for you guys, because I know YouTube makes all my videos way, way darker than they actually are. So I tried to overcompensate by making it about, like, 50% brighter than I would normally play this at. Let's go up on the table, see if there's anything up here. And if you're wondering, so far my impressions are very positive of this game. I haven't really come across a whole lot that I didn't like, aside from maybe that thing with the steps, but that's just a, a gameplay convention thing that only I probably would even care about. Um, as you probably know, I, I tend to be a stickler for little stupid details like that, but, you know, I don't... not everybody feels that way. What's going on in here? Oh, what is that? Is a pipe sucking poisonous gas into it? That is a strange thing. What even are we looking at here? This just looks like a desk, right? But what's up with this little... It's like terraces to it. I don't have any desk like that. Maybe we're supposed to throw something in there? Maybe put the pipe in there or something? I'm not sure exactly what the point of it is, but... I'll try it out real quick anyway. I'll put a block in it. Oh, the door shut again. Is the air pressure forcing it closed? I don't know. Yeah, no. Doesn't really do anything. Alright, let's keep walking. Alright, we've got broken glasses, or plates, a bunch of apples. Very large apples. Are they apples? Maybe they're pomegranates? Uh, the size doesn't quite add up. I always like to try and keep scale in mind with these types of things. Oh, love, love, love that shadow effect. That is so nice. See, this is a case where when we're dealing with these, like, domestic kind of environments that we're very used to seeing, having something like the little slats on this uh, grate be individually rendered uh, makes all the difference for, you know, casting the right lights on things. Getting very curious to know what's going on in this house. Got our bottle on the ground. Everything's knocked everywhere. Are there gonna be creatures trying to eat me? I don't know why things are falling off the top of this. Maybe I can pull these out and make a step ladder. I'm gonna do it like a tiny little bit at a time if I'm gonna. I'm pretty sure this is what I'm supposed to do. Whoa, why is this plate floating by itself? 
Play, what are you doing, man? I don't know where the thing's going. I thought it was a Roomba for a second because it just started sliding on by. That probably would break the atmosphere a little bit. Although it could be pretty scary if you're like a little kid and you don't understand what a Roomba is supposed to be and then all of a sudden this little robot comes clambering up to you. Um, I can't seem to climb up these, so apparently this is not what I was supposed to do. Seems like it really was, though. Well, I can also probably just get a good viewpoint from back here. It doesn't seem like there's anything up there. Excuse me? This is the same doll that was in the other room. I already talked to him. Maybe like some kind of SCP thing. Maybe the, uh, the dolls that look the most innocuous are the ones that are trying to mess with you. Alright, so how am I supposed to get up there? Alright, let's open up everything we can, see if there's any way through. In a weird way, this almost scratches this itch that I've had for a game where you can essentially just navigate houses, uh, just like explore architecture in a way. I mean, this isn't exactly the thrust of what we're going for. Yeah, let's put the baby in the oven, how about that? That was probably a bad idea. Uh, but I've always sort of wanted to play a virtual reality game where you can control every single object in a house. Just like have free reign to do with what you want inside of a realistically modeled house or a naturalistically modeled house. Not sure why I have that sort of a, a craving, but you know, I like weird games. Something like that would go really well with the, uh, the Oculus Rift concept. What does this say? I don't know what that says. But yeah, just imagine, uh, you know, wearing the, the whole VR goggles set up and then being able to actually navigate an environment that you're somewhat familiar with over time. I don't know how I'm supposed to get around. Oh, there we go. Another pipe. It's like a book. And a radio. Can't really do much with that. Might as well drop it on the ground. Um, I guess I could try and drag this chair around the other side. Whoa. Wow, this kid is very adventurous. I would not do that myself. Um, I might be able to actually use this to get over to that desk or that uh, surface, I guess I should say. Oh, hello. I didn't mean to fall at that point. See, if I bend this so it's almost in line with the end of the chair, although I don't know, maybe I can just, can I drag this thing? Yeah, I can. Let me just drag this over here through all of the stuff. I should be able to just open the door through this. I'm trying to overcomplicate everything. Alright, climb up. No, up. There it is. Controls seem a little iffy at times. Not gonna lie. Uh, it's been pretty minimal on the horror element so far. Uh, should I bother dragging this chair through here? I don't know if it'll go through this door f doorway, door frame. Uh, no. Looks like that will block it. Okay. We're gonna have to find out another way, if there is even a way to open that door. What's going on back here? There's more of this poison gas getting sucked into this pipe. What's going on with the, the vent system in this house? It's very unorthodox, in my experience. There's another fire extinguisher. I think that's at least the second one I've seen of those. Am I supposed to be, like, hiding in these closets later? Alright, we've got a heartbeat sound. That means that we're in... About to get scared, perhaps. Following the horror formula. This one feels pretty diffused to me. It's not exactly a pure horror game. And the jump scares that we're going for appear to be lightning every time so far. But there's definitely some room for very scary stuff to happen if that's where we're going. This door seems to be blocked off on purpose. And this one is obviously letting me make my way inside. Oh yeah, it's the darkest room yet. Little kids can't operate flashlights, so... So we'll just have to see where this goes. Love the texture on the wood paneling on the slats, that's really, really nice. It's got this really nice, like, silky, kind of warm feeling to it. Uh, maybe warm is not the right word, but it's... It's classy, it's elegant, looks professional from a gameplay standpoint. 
Alright, I guess that's mom's room. This is my final puzzle, is to climb up these drawers. This house really has lots of drawers in it, doesn't it? The computer keyboard. Alright, there we go. Should make it up. And then I probably need to extend this one out as far as it goes, and that should give me room to reach that handle. There we go. And nobody leaves their door slightly ajar. This kid is very proficient at navigating these environments. I'm gonna guess, though, the simple answer is that this isn't mom. Because we're... Yeah, who sleeps with the covers completely over them? Oh, there's no one here! It looked like it was just moving a second ago. Messing with my mind. Yeah. Alright, well that door just opened by itself. I guess we are going for Supernatural. I don't know, we'll see. So far it's all been suggested. Nothing overt. Alright, close the door. See what's behind it. That is a lot of boxes. I get if you were moving, but like, come on now. Just break them down. You ever done cardboard breakdown? You just, you know, get a box cutter, go to town on it. And are you opening this door for me? Pretty please? I don't want to backtrack. Might be where we're going with this. What's up with this wall, by the way? Appears to be actually separated out. Maybe there's like a secret wall? I don't know. Nothing under the table worth looking at. Let's head back into the other room, see if there's anything over there. Oh. Okay, well, I guess there's our answer. Uh, that actually <laughs> scared the crap out of me a little bit. Uh, I really wasn't expecting us to go quite that dark. There was an air of innocence about this game until just a moment ago. I thought we were going, like, PG-13 kind of, uh, levels of scare. That's a nice touch that we can lift that up and actually mess with the piano keys a little bit. What on earth is going on in there? Alright, I guess we found a portal to another dimension or something. Uh, this game is really strange and very interesting. Uh, I, I wonder if this is going to be the end of the demo, though. Or the alpha. No, no, apparently not. Are we going into the basement? Little kids in basements do not get along. Alright, what is up with this? <laughs> now I'm starting to wonder if this is going to end up being like Hellraiser with a little kid in it or something. This is the puzzle box. You know, I have a hard time believing at age two that the kid could be so screwed up that he could imagine all this kind of stuff already. What are we looking at on top of this desk? Can't quite figure it out. I might as well grab this. Oh. Alright, it put places or pieces of the world back together. Break these blocks apart. What a capable kid. Pretty sure I couldn't have navigated any of this stuff when I was this age. Alright, this is the world's scariest boiler room ever. You really expect me to go into this? Alright, I thought everything was just molten hot for a second. Maybe it's just a lighting effect. Yeah, let's do it. Oh yeah, I definitely want to fall down into that pit. And very sorry to be a tease, but that is where we're going to be wrapping up the video, unfortunately. Uh, so far, my impressions of Among the Sleep are very, very favorable. I am very curious to see where this goes, uh, where it could even go. I mean, I don't know what the tone of this is going to end up being. 
Uh, but it does appear to be like it's going to be much darker than I was expecting, uh, which is probably a good thing, although I don't know, it gets a little iffy with, like, uh, having a two-year-old child be, you know, maimed and mutilated by demons. Uh, but then again, I'm sure we could still salvage the concept of that it's all going on in his head, if that is what we truly want to do. I'm not sure if that is the intention. Maybe uh, the developers at Krillbyte Studio are going to go absolutely uh, horrendously dark with this. I'm not sure. But either way, I'm intrigued, and I definitely want to see more. Uh, so if you feel like I do and want to see more, uh, go head on over to their Greenlight page. Link's going to be right in the description of this video. Uh, show them a little bit of support, spread the word, do what you can about the game if you can, and uh, we'll see where this all ends up. I'm sure this is going to be a game that when it releases I'll be making some videos of. I can't imagine I would want to pass over it at this point now that I've gotten a little bit of a taste of it. Uh, and honestly, I'm sorry that I went so slowly through some of the beginning there, but I did want to sa uh, sort of soak up the environment and the atmosphere a bit. I thought that was one of the stronger points of what was going on, so we might as well uh, take it to the furthest conclusion we can. So that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, remember to head on over to my website, which is indie-impressions.com, so you can get a praise of all the old indie games you might have missed in the series. We are now over 400 videos and going strong, so please do... Uh, visit that website so you can catch up on all that stuff. Uh, we've got them all sorted neatly, so if you want to search by uh, distribution method, platform, uh, various genres, even if you want to type a developer into the search box, that is entirely up to you. Also got a Facebook page, facebook.com slash indie impressions. If you want to go visit that and leave a like, it is entirely up to you, but it does help me out just a little bit, and then you'll get every day's new video delivered into your Facebook feed, as well as channel updates and uh, general news, contest game giveaways and such. Uh, I've also got a Twitter handle, which is at Rockley Smile, where you can contact me if you want to just say, hey, uh, let me know what's going on. Maybe if you're an indie developer, you want to contact me about possibly doing your game on the show, that is up to you. I've also got a contact form on Indie-Impressions for that, uh, so that is up to you how you want to contact me, if you want to contact me, but I'm always willing to hear from just about anyone about just about anything, so please do keep me in the loop, I'm always interested. There are thousands and thousands of indie games still to cover, so this series will keep rolling on with your support, so please do tell a friend if you, uh, you, know, if you don't mind, it would help me out quite a bit, uh, and keep you know, informing everyone as to what's going on with this series, and keep spreading the word. That is really all I can ask. We're still spreading primarily by word of mouth, so I appreciate every little bit of support I can get. But that is going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please do come back again tomorrow for another indie game. We will keep going as long as possible, and I hope you have a lovely night, and, you know, don't get too scared. <laughs> a pretty creepy game, I have to say. I really wasn't expecting it to go that dark. But I will talk to you tomorrow.